My name is Vincent Conitzer. I'm a professor here in the computer science department. I also have appointments in economics and philosophy. And today I'm going to be talking about moral artificial intelligence. These days, everybody is very aware that there has been tremendous progress in artificial intelligence. You can see that all around us. For one, if you haven't tried dictating something to your phone in a while, I recommend doing that. That's become really good. You could think about image recognition, right? So if you post pictures on Facebook, Facebook often knows who is in those pictures. So we see all this progress around us. We hear about self-driving cars. They're not quite everywhere on the roads yet, but they're getting there. Based on that, a lot of people have great interest in artificial intelligence. A lot of people also start to have serious concerns about what this might do to our society. Often when AI is in the media today, for example, AlphaGo uh, winning at the game of Go, in the article about that topic, somebody will put a picture of, let's say, the Terminator or some apocalyptic AI scenario. And you know, it's a little bit tongue in cheek. Whoever is putting those images there presumably knows that that's not what the system is doing. Um, Meanwhile, in fact, there are a group of people who are very seriously worried about the prospect that AI will become generally more intelligent than human beings. So far, AI is already surpassing human beings in certain narrow domains, uh, but they don't have the kind of general intelligence that we have. But maybe one day that will change. And so then the question becomes, when is that going to happen? And if and when it happens, what can we expect to happen as a result? The question of when we reach truly human level artificial intelligence is a very difficult one to answer. Today, we don't know how to build these systems. So there are some insights or probably multiple insights that we are missing, but we don't know exactly what it is that we're missing. If we really were able to put our finger on that, then we would probably also be able to build it. So I think any reasonable person, if you ask them when this is going to happen, is going to have a lot of uncertainty about that. It might happen sooner than we expect. It might happen later than we expect. There are a lot of surveys out there that try to elicit from actual AI researchers when they think it's likely to happen. When you ask a question such as, when will AI have human level intelligence, different people might interpret that differently. So if you really think of that as being able to do everything cognitively that a human being can, that is a lot more demanding than I think what many people interpret that question to be about. With those caveats, it's surprising that Quite a few AI researchers believe that there's a pretty good chance that this might actually happen in the next few decades. Whether it actually will, I don't know. Usually also there's a good number of people who think that it will never happen or centuries from now. So it's important to be aware of that. There's a lot of uncertainty about all of this. One concern that people have is that, well, if we reach human level artificial intelligence, probably we're not going to stop at human level artificial intelligence. It won't be long until we're much further along than human level artificial intelligence, in particular also because we will have the AI itself to help us build better systems. So this is a part of the argument that I do buy. If we really get to human level artificial intelligence, which is very demanding, then probably we won't stop at that point and it will transform the world in ways that we cannot even imagine today. So this raises the question of what should we do about that today? Some people argue that, look, maybe it's an important issue, but today we have no idea what those systems look like. And so today our time is best spent thinking about more immediate issues. We can worry about human level artificial intelligence when we get close to it. And there's some sense in that answer. Other people will argue that this is too important and there are things that we can do now, things that we can think about that will eventually be helpful in guiding this to good outcomes. So there are different camps of people here. I think it makes sense to give everybody some credit uh, and it doesn't hurt to devote some resources to thinking about these kind of questions, in my opinion. But it is controversial. And there are also certainly a lot of more immediate issues with artificial intelligence and the impact that it's having on our society that don't require human level artificial intelligence to be very important already. So it's generally difficult for people, especially those with no experience in the field, to have a good sense of what AI can and cannot do. And that is because the kinds of things that we traditionally associate with intelligence aren't necessarily the things that are hardest for AI to achieve. It used to be the case that we thought that chess was a great measure of how intelligent the system was. Now we know that we can, uh, in effect, build AI systems that are vastly better than human beings at the game of chess. 
And yet we haven't solved many of the other problems. Many of the other problems turned out to be much more difficult, even though to us they're not difficult. Recognizing a friend on the street to us comes very natural, and we don't think of that as exhibiting intelligence. And yet it is very difficult to make AI systems that can perform well on that kind of task. Now we're kind of getting to systems that can uh, really recognize people well, but there are still many other problems that we don't know yet how to solve. Many of these problems involve common sense, the ability to understand the world at different levels, relating the different knowledge that you have from different domains to each other, synthesizing our information from different uh, places, being creative with the information that you have in various ways. Often, if you don't work in AI, it's difficult to know what these systems are really capable of and what they're not capable of. So what they're today very good at uh, is various tasks where you have the same kind of task occurring over and over again. Not necessarily the exact same task, but the same kind of task. So you could think about flipping burgers. You could also think about something like radiology. In radiology, you might be classifying a particular kind of image over and over again, right? So we, have, we see an image and we have to diagnose whether there is a tumor in that image or not. And then we get the next image and we have to diagnose that. Uh, so that's the kind of example where it's very repeated. There is a clear objective, a clear sense of what it means to perform well. And that's exactly the kind of setting where AI systems are starting to perform very well. What they're not good at yet is having the kind of broad and integrated understanding of the world that we do. So we tend to be much more flexible. We tend to understand the world at different levels. We tend to understand our social world very well. Uh, because of that, we can be creative in kind of out of the box ways. We have common sense. Uh, and this is the kind of thing that's still very difficult for AI systems. A nice example of the kind of thing that AI systems are not good at yet is what's known as a Winograd schema. Suppose I give you the following sentence. The ball crashed through the door because it was made of styrofoam. Now, when you hear this sentence, you immediately know what it refers to. It refers to the door because it was made of styrofoam. If you go to Google Translate, uh, you can have some fun with this and find out that AI systems are really not able to resolve this ambiguity yet. Because in principle, maybe it could also refer to the ball. We immediately know that it's not going to refer to the ball because if the ball were made of styrofoam, then it wouldn't presumably crash through the door. But if we change the sentence and we said, the ball crashed through the door because it was made of steel, we now immediately know that it refers to the ball. right? But this requires a certain amount of common sense a uh, basic understanding of physics that AI systems don't have. Again, all these things are a little bit subtle. It's not the case that AI systems today cannot be creative. If we think about AlphaGo, the Go system from uh, DeepMind that defeated Lee Sedol and other top Go players, in many ways it was creative in the sense that it came up with moves that no human had ever come up with and that were very surprising to us. I believe that in chess, the situation is now that when humans play chess against each other and one has a particularly creative move, often the human will be suspected of having used AI while going to the bathroom or something like that uh, in order to generate that move. So in that sense, creativity is actually becoming a hallmark of computer players rather than of people. But a different kind of creativity where we step back and think outside the box that is still very, still very difficult for AI systems to attain. For example, AlphaGo is never going to step back and think about the game of Go and imagine how it might be more fun to play it with some redstones in there as well. That's not the kind of thinking that AlphaGo can do today. Also, it doesn't have any sense of the broader context of the game. It has no idea of what it is really like to pick up a stone and put it back down and the physics of that. So one thing that you should take into account when you deploy AI is that in many ways, these systems are still very brittle. And they will fail in ways that are very much unlike the ways in which human beings will fail. And one nice example of this is facial recognition systems. They've become very good, and they can uh, detect who is in a picture with remarkable accuracy. But there was a study coming out of CMU recently where they tried to manipulate one of these systems uh, by wearing specially designed eyeglasses. They weren't even full eyeglasses. They were just the frames of eyeglasses that they had designed themselves with the explicit intent of misleading the system. And so they were able to consistently get the system to misclassify one of the researchers, who was clearly a man, 
as Mila Jovovich, the, art, the actress. So they had a little bit of fun uh, that they could design these classes to mislead the system. And when you look at it, it's very difficult, even for people working in the field, to understand what exactly is going wrong there. Why is it making those kinds of mistakes that a human being would never make? And the reason is that the AI system picks up on some kind of statistical pattern that is in the data uh, that can be used to great effect, but that isn't very robust to little changes in the setup. Right? So the moment that there start to be differences in how the data is presented, that the images are coming from a different machine or any other kind of change like that, then the performance of the system might drop. And particularly if people start to intentionally manipulate the system or try to get it to give wrong answers, there are often surprisingly good ways to do that. And so as a result, these systems are often not as robust as people. When we as a person go into the world and perform a certain kind of task over and over again, and one day something changes, uh, we will typically look at that and say, hey, something is going on. I need to take a step back, figure out what's going on. Something here doesn't quite add up and we jump to a different level of reasoning. The AI system typ typically cannot do that. Something that is related is the problem of transfer learning. Uh, so as human beings, we tend to be very good at taking something that we have learned in one domain and applying the insights from that uh, to another domain. This is still very hard for AI systems. Typically, you have to train them in the domain where they're going to perform, and it's difficult to get the insights that it's learned in that domain and have those be useful for the AI system in a different domain without retraining the AI system for that particular new domain. So that's where some of the vulnerabilities of today's AI systems still lie. It can be misleading when you see that uh, a system performs very well on a task that would seem to be challenging for a human. You might think that that clearly means that you should roll out this AI system. But oftentimes when people have done that, they didn't realize how brittle the system would be in practice, that the moment that something changed about the situation or something unexpected happened, the system would no longer perform as well. So this is something to be very mindful of. If you really are sure that the setting where you're thinking of deploying AI is very predictable and stable, and you have a good sense of what you're trying to optimize, then that's a good place for today's AI to be. If you think that there are likely to be surprises, unexpected things happening, uh, then you might want to think twice before deploying today's AI. Or maybe you want to deploy it in a way that it's combined with a person that oversees it and that can take action when something unexpected happens. But for now, these systems aren't always as robust as people imagine them to be based on seeing the results of a simple test. So earlier on, when AI was still mostly confined to the laboratory, Oftentimes in AI, you need to specify some kind of objective function, some kind of goal for your system to pursue. And when it was being developed in the laboratory, often the precise choice of what the objective function was didn't matter a whole lot. I always like this example of a problem in what's known as reinforcement learning, where you have a cart that is on a track, and the cart has a pole on it, and it needs to balance the pole. And so the AI's task is to move the cart back and forth so that the pole stays upright. And that's a challenging problem in the beginning, but it's not challenging to figure out what the objective function is. The objective is to keep the pole upright. And that's a perfectly fine problem for developing the techniques to the point that they could be used in practice. However, once you start deploying AI in practice, again, you need to specify an objective function, but now often the objective function matters a lot. And if you specify it in a simplistic way, it often has unintended consequences. For example, a very natural, simple objective function might be that you try to maximize the number of clicks that something gets on your website. But when you do that, you find out eventually that that generates clickbait, right? And so we see, we're seeing a lot of these examples where these simple objective functions turn out to have side effects that were unintended and also undesired. And so we need to be thinking a lot more about how we should specify those objective functions. Very often, there's some kind of ethical component to those objective functions. There might be fairness concerns that if we specify the objective function in one way, it might end up discriminating against certain groups of people. Uh, there are many other components to it as well. So it's a very challenging question that we've been spending quite a bit of time thinking about. 
And there are different kinds of approaches that you might take. One is to take some kind of ethical theory and apply it in a top-down way to figure out what that theory says you should be optimizing with your AI system and then just directly implementing that. But that's often hard to do and it often misses a lot of aspects. So instead of that, what we have been doing is we have been asking people, uh, human subjects, what kind of decisions they would like the AI system to make in various concrete scenarios. So they would say, well, you know, if the situation is such and so, I would like the system to do this. Now, in general, there are many scenarios, too many for any person to be able to, uh, to say what the AI system should do in every single one of them explicitly. But after a couple of these answers, we may be able to get a good idea of what is driving the person's decisions. And once we've learned, once the AI system has learned how the human is making those decisions, uh, and it can predict what decision the human would make, then it could also take that decision itself. And so that would be one way in which you could get an AI system to make decisions that, from a moral perspective, are aligned with those of a human being. I think an important thing for companies and other entities to do is when they deploy one of these AI systems, to think carefully about what the effects of this system might be. One natural thing to think about is, will it work equally well for different groups of people? Oftentimes we find that a system that works very well for one group of people that were maybe what the designer had in mind when they deployed the system end up not working well for different groups of people. So this can be discriminatory against those groups of people. It can also result in bad press for the company. And I think we're finding now that a lot of the high tech companies are thinking about these things very consciously. So they have groups of people in the companies that have exactly these kind of issues uh, in the front of their minds that they're thinking about what might be the effects on different parts of society of the decisions that are being taken in this company and how should they be thinking about those questions. It's still a little bit too early, I think, to have very general guidelines for what you should do in that kind of position. That is still a topic of ongoing research and development, but it's certainly on a lot of people's minds. And it's certainly a good thing to be conscious of the impacts that the technology might have on different groups of people before you deploy it. Because even though some of the bad effects might be very difficult to forecast, others I think you can anticipate if you spend some time thinking about it. And so sometimes it's necessary to take a little bit of time and think about what might go wrong before rolling something out. Many people are worried about AI's impact on the workforce and that AI will be able to put many people out of a job, that it will replace them in their jobs. Some of these concerns are better founded than others. In particular, what AI is good at today is very narrow tasks. So if you're in a profession where you keep repeating the same kind of task over and over again, you are more likely to be replaced by an AI system than if you're in a profession where you have to be flexible and creative. For example, if you're flipping burgers, well, there are now robots out there that can do a decent job of flipping burgers. But they may not be able to deal with customers that have complicated questions or things that happen in the restaurant. So some people will still be required. So the right way to think about it is that AI systems are likely to replace particular tasks. There are few people that have a job that is so repetitive that an AI system is likely to replace the entire job. Nevertheless, if lots of tasks in your job are getting automated, then it stands to reason that there will be fewer of those jobs for people available. And so if you want to avoid being in that kind of situation, I think it's always good to play to your strengths. So humanity's strengths tend to come in being able to have a very broad perspective on things, being flexible, having a very integrated understanding of everything that's going on, as a result of which you can do good common sense reasoning, you can be a little bit creative in solving problems. These are the ways that I think you can protect yourself from having your job replaced. You should also be aware that probably still many jobs will change drastically over time as some of their tasks get automated, right? And some jobs will certainly start to involve new tasks that we didn't even imagine being there before. That didn't make sense to have as part of the job before, but because an AI system is working so well, you can add that to the job. So most people will need some level of familiarity with these kinds of systems, and they will need the ability to adapt to them as well. So one thing that seems likely to happen is that jobs keep changing. 
I personally believe that there will be many human jobs left for a long time to come. But what exactly these jobs entail and what will be in high demand versus in low demand, that will change over time. So people will need to learn to be adaptive. They will need to learn how to learn a new job. These, I think, are going to be the skills that will be very helpful in building a good career in the future. <music>